Hey guys, doing a selfie-like video today because I don't feel like uh, setting up my stand on my monitor and all that. I just want to do a quick video and upload it to YouTube. This is Faith of All, by the way. If it's your first time here, I want to thank you for checking out my channel. I have better produced videos than this. But that being said, um, I think my content is of high value. And if you appreciate it as well, I would certainly appreciate your subscription. Uh, hit the notification bell below anytime you want to get notified, anytime I release any new videos. And, of course, I appreciate you liking the video and commenting below as I try to respond to as many people as possible. So today's topic is, it's all in your head. That's why you feel so bad. Or, you feel bad? It's all in your head. I'm going to prop, yeah, I'll use that for the title of this, of this video. And, of course, is it a little bit clickbaity? Yeah, maybe a little bit, but... What I really mean by that is, and this is something I've been studying in A Course of Miracles, that only I decide whether the thoughts I have hurt me or not. Only I can hurt myself with my own thoughts. Now, of course, you can get into an accident and you know break a bone, and that's going to hurt. And, of course, you're not going to be happy about that. That's understandable. So I get that there's some built-in response to negative feelings that we have as human beings. And it's not just like, snap, you can turn it off. But um, I've talked to many people over the years that have come to me with different problems or trials and tribulations they're going through, crises, stuff like that, and they only seem to want to be heard. But why would you tell someone about something that you're going through and say you just want to be heard and don't ask for any advice? And sometimes people get upset when you offer them advice. It's like, do you actually want to get better? Like, that's a valid question that I would ask yourself in that moment if you find yourself guilty of that. And I've been there too, of course. Like, of all, especially for kids, you know, teenagers, you know, we're always right. But the point is, it's like, I would first analyze, are you liking the response that people have to you when you're feeling that way more than actually getting the advice? Now, don't get me wrong. People should, that respect you, should listen and hear you out fully and completely, you know, if you've entrusted them with this kind of information. So they should be respectful of that. But what I'm asking you as the person who's sharing that information, do you actually want to get better? And it's not a flippant kind of question. It's not a question of, well, you just want to suffer, you're a glutton for pain. It's more of, do you really actually want to get better? Do you find yourself wanting to, like seeking out people to share your issues with because you appreciate the fact that they listen to you as a friend or whatever, as a significant other, and gives you that time of day, like, okay, if that's the, that's the reward that you're looking for in it, then who am I to tell you to change that? But if, if you really analyze that and you, and you think it's more like a deeper thing, like that you enjoy being the victim, um, not that you enjoy the pain, but you enjoy the, the, what, the power that it gives you when you can get, you know, get other people's attention to listen to what you're saying. Or do you hope that when you actually share this information to someone, that they're actually going to that it's actually going to help you in some way, either work it out on your own and come up with a solution, or ask for advice. And there's nothing wrong with asking for advice. Uh, I think it's a sign of strength. Like I don't have a problem if I'm lost asking someone for help because I don't want to be lost that much longer at all. And you know, of course, there's that, that there's a part of you that's like, you know what, I want to figure this out on my own so that I don't have to worry about bugging somebody else. Um, but if you notice when you go to people to help, if they know the answer, they're more than willing to give it to you because it makes them feel empowered too. And then you're empowered because you have an answer that you didn't have to, you know, find on your own the hard way. So it's a lot of things that revolve around that idea. But what it comes down to is that you really want to identify, you know, first of all, are you actually wanting help? And if you are wanting help and you don't have anybody that you can talk to, or you've spoken to someone and they've listened to you and or given you advice, and your first re reaction is to, you know, say no, you know, or to ignore the advice, I would also ask yourself why you do that. Uh, but besides all that, all that put aside, in the end, when you have a situation occur that makes you feel negative, if you really analyze it, and this is something that A Course in Miracles will really explain probably better than I can in a small, short video, that if we really analyze it, it's not what happened to you that hurts you know, beyond the point where it actually hurt you. Like, for example, breaking your arm or someone cheating on you or you, you lost a loved one. Yeah, that initial reaction is going to be hurt, but is your continued being hurt. The fact that you're still hurting now, you know, days, months, years later, is that because the event is happening to you in the present 
still, or is it because of your thoughts about the meaning behind the death or the, the, the loss or whatever, or the pain that you went through? Is it, is it you're rehashing in your mind, trying to find a justification for it? Um, either, whatever the case may be, your thoughts about the, about the event are what is hurting you at that point in time. So you're not in the moment when it happened anymore. It no longer has any power over you um, unless you let it by the way you think about the event. And that is one of the most powerful things I've learned in my life is I have a choice. And it might be a freaking hard choice because I'm so, like, my hormones are raging. I'm upset. I'm hurt. I'm offended. Whatever the case is, I'm feeling it in that moment. But I've learned that I can shut that down very quickly just by realizing, wait a second, is this, is this person really still hurting me? Because, um, as you may know, hurt people hurt people. And people are that hurt you or attack you are in a weird way looking for help or love. It's a cry for help or love. They don't even realize they're giving because they're not, you know, emotionally and spiritually mature enough. But when it's, but you know, of course that's going to happen. But for you, like once you realize, like post the exact moment where the event happened to you, that it's all in your mind and you can actually change your mind about it and say, you know what? You might not be able to feel good about the situation, and no one's asking you to, but you can forgive the situation and just say, well, you know what? It is what it is. Feeling bad about it is not going to make me feel better. Worrying about it is not going to change what happened. There's literally no point in giving it your emotional attention at that point in time. So once you are able to master that, and it takes a lot of practice, and I'm not perfect, but I've definitely noticed some massive improvements in my life just by utilizing that principle of just letting it go, forgiving the situation, and, you know, I notice over time, the pain lasts less. And when I do have the pain, it's less as well in that moment. So the next time, you know, you're in a situation where you're, you're like kind of stuck in a rut and you're not getting any better because you're thinking negatively about a situation that happened in the past, just try practicing, oh, well, screw it, nothing I can do about it. And try reminding yourself that feeling bad about the situation never made you feel better. It just perpetuated you feeling bad. The more time, the more you give attention to something that hurts you, the longer it sticks around. What you resist shall persist, and it's all, you know, explained as well in the law of attraction principle. So, hopefully, if at the end of this video you're feeling offended, please realize that I'm giving you this information because I want to help you. Um, I'm not saying this at all whatsoever to judge you or to make you feel bad for feeling bad because that's not going to help either. <laughs> Hopefully, it's you feel, okay, this is some valid advice to take into consideration, and maybe I'll try it and see if it works. And what's the worst that could happen? You feel better, because literally, you have less time, you're feeling bad. So, again, I'm not, I'm not going to tell you that it's going to be quick. It's not. It's going to take a while. It took me years to get maybe, I would say, 5% of this down throughout my entire day and my entire life. So... Uh, we're all, uh, you know, a work in progress, but this is, I believe, part of the spiritual journey is learning how to live in the moment, which I'm not even close to yet, and letting go of the past and not worrying about the future. Thanks and God bless.